Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken and uh, from Rutgers. Uh, today I will present our work on quantitatively predict uh, to quantitatively predictive model on how hu on how human beings uh, forgetting their passwords based on the password usage. Uh, the first author, Shani, uh, he just uh, defend defend his thesis and uh, left, so he is unable to present it. Um, the other authors of this work is Yulong. Uh, Chris and the Professor Andy. Uh, Yanni Lindquist is uh, my advisor. Oh. Sorry. Um, let's go to the take takeaway directly. Um, this is our our work is the first to quantitatively model uh, the forgetting of the passwords, and we utilize uh, the psychology theory of human long-term memory. Uh, to explain why people uh, forget their passwords. And uh, we also conducted a field study to uh, provide evidence to our hypothesis that uh, the more likely uh, the password needed in the future and the more likely it will be recorded. The figures on the, on the left, they, they show the, the fitting result of our model uh, to the field study. Uh, the script, the points are the user data, and the lines uh, are our model. They fit pretty well. I will explain it later. Uh, in our work, we adapted the uh, the ecological theory of the human long-term memory for the mass, uh, password memorability. This is a theoretical theory. Uh, that suggests long-term memory uh, evolved to help survival by anticipating organismically important events. What does that mean? That means uh, the, the, pre the predictive, the more important predictor uh, to recalling a password is the predicted value to remember it in the future. Uh, with the password's memorability, we hypothesize like uh, the more likely the password is needed, so it would be more likely being recorded. Oh, we have this kind of th psychology theory for human long-term memory, and uh, to be able to use it to quantitatively make, uh, uh, predict uh, the, the password memorability, we derived our model uh, from the act R, which is the adaptive, adaptive control of thoughts rational. This is our final result, and uh, the, de the details on how we derive this can be found in our paper. Uh, in the high level, we can see the, there are k's, d's, and uh, the time for act. Those are just parameters. We can, we can fit them with our data. So there are only two parameters I want to mention that will really affect our model, which is uh, the, the first is the how often the user logging, and the second is the amount of login times. We represent them as F and D. We can see here the F is positively proportional to the uh, time logging, and N is uh, negatively pro uh, proportional to it. Uh, from our model, we can imply that the more often users uh, you log in and the more times you log in, uh, it's shorter times needed for uh, performing the login behavior. Similarly, we can look at uh, the model for, estimate, for estimating uh, the, uh, the correct uh, recall rates of the passwords. Uh, we use the recall odd, which is uh, also a term from a, a human memory model to reflect the likelihood of a correctly recalling a password. It is defined as the ratio of the probability of, the probability of successful recall the password uh, over the ratio of uh, uh, failed, uh, failed recorded passwords. Also, the parameters here, C, tall, S, and D, they are the uh, model parameter that can be, uh, that, that can be fitted later. And uh, the only two interesting uh, parameters are the password usage, which is also the frequency and uh, the login time. With this model, it's, it implies the similar thing, is the more often you, you log in and the more times uh, you log in, 
it will lead to a higher probability of successful records of passwords. Uh, and le uh, after that, it is also it will lead to a higher uh, record odds. And later, uh, for, uh, later on, we'll just use the record odds. Um, to provide the evidence to our theoretical model, uh, we conducted a field study on how text on um, using text passwords for logging. The purpose of, of this study is to find the influence of the different logging frequencies and the amount of uh, logins on the, on the two theoretical models we just mentioned, which is the average uh, successful login duration and the uh, uh, record hours. Uh, we used eight different login frequencies from once a day to uh, once per eight days. Uh, after the study, we specifically asked the participants to report uh, whether they used any tools for helping them to recall the, uh, their passwords, for example, the password manager, and uh, also write them down or in the file. Um, in the end, we also specifically mentioned that they, it won't uh, impact their compensations but none of the participants shared that they used this kind of tool uh, during our study. Um, we applied two types of password stress meter to evaluate the password security. The first one is the Zika CVBN, which is also used previously. Uh, the, this, it is widely used for the different uh, websites. And we use it here is during the, the users create their passwords to give them uh, a real-time feedback on how uh, the password runs. So we want to lead them to uh, create some more secure passwords. Uh, this also will mimic the real-world password si creation situation. Also, we use the CMU neural network password meter, which is data-driven data uh, password meter. And we use it to evaluate the, the security of the password. And then we also want to use it to study the, the relationship between the password memorability to the security. Then it's our result. Um, this is the re result of our memorability model fit the, av uh, fit the average login durations. Generally, our data fits uh, pretty well with the different login frequencies. Uh, with the amount of uh, the time increasing, the, the, log the average login durations will decrease, which is, makes sense because the more time you log in, uh, the users should be spend less time to uh, recalling the password. Uh, additionally, the fitted, uh, the fitted uh, curves shift upwards be based on the different frequencies of the logins. It, it means the longer time, uh, the, uh, the less frequent to log in your, uh, your account, it means it will take more time to record your passwords. Uh, finally, I want to note that um, our data is not exactly fit for example, for each uh, specific login data, they are not just uh, fitted for the exact curves, but they fitted the eight curves. We optimized the, the errors based on the, all of the eight curves. So if you just pick one of them, it may not fit that well as uh, you, you imagine. Uh, next is we fitted the record, uh, the record odds model to the user study data. Uh, we want to make a note that here we use the uh, reciprocal of the records. The reason is that after enough times of logins, the user can memorize uh, their password entries pretty well. So uh, the, the records can, if it is the original version, the successful rate will be, uh, become one and the failed rate is zero, then it will become infinity. So generally, we learn from this figure that our data uh, also follow the fitted curve nicely. And the curve with the, the login frequencies from 1 to 8 also shifts upwards, uh, just similar to the average login data. Uh, you may also observe that there are a few points 
here they are uh, quite far away from their supposed to be the curves. Uh, the reason that we are using log, uh, log scales, so they are far away. And also because uh, this is from one day per login and two days per login, which is we fixed our total uh, studies to one to one month. That's why there are only for the 30 practices, there are only one day and two days, but there isn't any eight days because they, they won't have so many logins. Um, besides the fitted uh, models, we also analyze the relationship between the login frequencies and the password uh, memorabilities. From the last figure, uh, we learned the, the more people log in and the last time they record their passwords. Uh, I want to mention here that all logins uh, include the phase logins because there, there, is a time, uh, there is a time limit. And the successful login, of course, is just uh, straightforward. Uh, the right figure here shows uh, the more often people log in, uh, the higher probability people record their password correctly. Because both of them uh, make sense because the more people use passwords, the, uh, the more likely they will memorize them correctly. Here is we examined the influence of the uh, login times on the password memorability. The figure shows the larger amount of time, uh, larger amount of log user logins helps uh, decrease the time for inputting the passwords. The reason is pretty obvious because the more times people log in, it's more better. Just more familiar with the passwords. Um, lastly, we want to show that uh, the here is the also the reciprocal of the record the the record or which is dropped very quickly, and uh, uh, after five uh, logins, it will all almost be zero. That means with only a few logins, uh, the the users can already uh, good enough to memorize the passwords. So they're all zeros until the end. Uh, in the end, we examined, uh, we examined the relationship between the password and the uh, memor uh, password security and the memorability. As a reminder, we use the neural network to estimate the password guessability. Uh, we found the more secure password are less memorable and uh, yeah, from our figure. And they need, need, need more time for entries. The reason is that uh, more, uh, more secure, the secure, more secure password are usually means they have, uh, usually means they have uh, complex uh, password structures will, may lead to uh, less memorable passwords. Uh, of course, this, this is not always true because there are already works here. Uh, they, start, they have good uh, st creation strategies on password creation uh, to make both memorable and uh, secure passwords. Um, lastly, I want to brief discuss the other related work on the passwords and memorabilities. Um, the issues with creating a test passwords to avoid uh, uh, the, the forgetting, to forgetting them, in this case, the users may not uh, put adequate efforts to create a password uh, with the creation guidelines. Uh, the second is the distribution of the real, uh, the real world password are pretty uh, concentrated in a small uh, weak subspace and uh, it's very easily to be guessed and uh, uh, they are very weak. The third is uh, users can create some very strong password but uh, and also very com uh, complex but they usually will have hard, hard time to remember it. Once they put a lot of effort to remember it, uh, they usually will use it, reuse it to the different accounts. Also, the, the password manager obviously will help in, as presented in the other paper, but uh, the thing is, the, a lot of users don't really uh, and understand how the password manager works, so they usually don't trust it. Um, takeaways. Uh, still, uh, still the same. We are the first to present the quantitative predictive model for forgetting the password, 
and we, uti we utilize the, uh, the psychological theory of human long-term memory to explain why people forget them. And lastly, we provide the evidence to support our, uh, to support our model. That's it, thank you. Okay, so we have time for some questions. Please state your name and affiliation when you come to the mic. Thank you. My name is Daniel Sokolov. I'm with Heise.de. Um, are you aware of any research in looking into muscle memory? Oh, pardon, I didn't. Uh, are you aware of any of anyone looking into muscle memory or in, or in memory relating to different modes of entry? Uh, yeah, that's a good question, but I didn't know where that I paper is. Because I, I think it's not just in here, it's if you have a keyboard or, or, or you have to yeah, do a dance in front great. of a camera, maybe it's, it's more memorable than just on a touch screen. Yeah, Thanks. definitely look great. Although I didn't uh, wear that, but I definitely think about that because when sometimes I forgot my the safe, the passcode of the safe, but when I, uh, when I was there and I kind of tapping it yeah, exactly, so. Hello, uh, Jeffrey Goldberg, Agile Bits, one password. Um, have you looked at all, or have you considered it clearly not in this, have you looked at the, at the memorability or the recall ability of uh, generated passwords, uh, such as like the diceware-like schemes with word lists or other uh, password generation schemes that are designed to be memorable? Um, yeah, I think the, yeah, uh, that, that is also a direction I think about it, but I didn't really look at that, the related work about that. Thank you. Hi, uh, Josh Purvis, uh, Cisco. Um, huh? Did you look at the association, I, I, and maybe I missed it, but um, were the passwords here associated with anything particular or just here's a password, remember it for this particular study application? Um, what do you mean by password? Were the passwords uh, that the users were being asked to remember associated with a particular site for them, or uh, you know, a banking site as opposed to a login oh, site, or anything else, yeah. or just the study? Yeah, actually, uh, you know, work. I, I didn't really present it here, but uh, because there, there's no evidence, there's uh, no big difference between them. Uh, the thing is, yes, we let me pull out that. Oh, sorry. Uh, actually, we have uh, uh, designed eight different uh, different websites. Ah, okay, I missed it. Sorry. Uh, we have uh, designed the eight different accounts from the four, four categories uh, to ask them to uh, create the password for the different uh, for the different accounts. Um, but in our paper, you can read that we didn't really find any interesting result from here. So, so you didn't find any differentiation and recall between mm, types of accounts at all? No. But these were not actual accounts, though. They were creating accounts, uh, creating passwords for imagining that you were creating. The, uh, yeah, they are, they are imagining the, the, this okay. kind of account. Interesting. Because we, we, we cannot really create the actual account. All right, so uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, let's thank our speaker.